A portion of this video is brought to you by Paperlike. So I have been using the 11 inch M1 iPad Pro for well over a year now and I've gathered some thoughts over the course of the year. I genuinely believe that long term reviews are so important because you guys watching this video as the consumer want to know how these tech products hold up over the long term. And quite honestly, I have noticed that long term reviews on YouTube as a whole is a missing genre. That's why on my channel, I'm aiming to fill that void. We all work hard for our money and sometimes buying an older tech product or in this case an M1 iPad Pro might be the best bang for your buck despite this iPad being more than a year old. The thing about Apple products that I really do appreciate is that they do age well over time and as of right now you guys can find some great deals on the M1 iPad Pro. I'll leave some links for you guys in the description below if you are interested. So in this long term review let's go over some of the things you actually want to know about the 11 inch M1 iPad Pro. Starting off by answering one of my most asked questions. After having owned an 11 inch iPad Pro for well over a year now do I regret not going with the bigger 12.9 inch variant? variant. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and let me just come out and say it. I feel like for about 90% of consumers watching this video, the 11 inch iPad Pro is the optimal option. Let me explain. Initially, I wanted the bigger M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I was absolutely ecstatic that Apple updated the display that they use for the bigger iPad to an XDR display with mini OLED. And if you watch my videos on the regular, then you know that I'm a sucker for a good display. But at the time, all of the 12.9 inch variants were completely sold out. And I ended up quote unquote settling for the 11 inch model. But looking back now, boy oh boy was I ever wrong. I ended up completely falling in love with the size and the form factor of the 11 inch iPad Pro. And let me be the first to tell you that I'm never going back to using a bigger iPad. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me that Apple hasn't significantly altered the design of the iPad Pro in quite some time. Just take a look at how thin this tablet is. This to me looks like such a futuristic design language. It honestly looks like a tablet straight out of Westworld. Speaking of worlds, the 11 inch model is the best of both worlds, meaning that with this tablet, that you're not sacrificing much of anything. You get the portability, you get the performance, and a new term that I coined called bettability. You can probably derive what that means. It means that with the 11 inch iPad Pro, I can easily use this tablet in the comfort of my bed without experiencing any hand fatigue. And that to me is a huge W. The 11 inch model only weighs 1.03 pounds, which for those of you keeping track at home is about 31% lighter than the 12.9 inch model. So when you add up that extra 31% of weight, times gravity, times the duration of use in the hands, it can definitely make it feel like you are holding a brick in your hands after a while. Weight is definitely a factor to consider when it comes to deciding upon a tablet. Of course, all of this depends upon how you intend to use your iPad. If you're solely buying an iPad to primarily use it as a standalone computer and you never want to take it off the magic keyboard, then the 12.9 inch variant is the way to go. But if you're like me and you want that versatility to use an iPad as both a computer and as a handheld device, then the 11 inch variant is the way to go. It's as simple as that. My daily driver phone of choice is the iPhone 13 mini and it's no secret that this thing is rocking a tiny 5.4 inch display. So owning a bigger 11 inch tablet is the perfect companion to my iPhone mini. Before we do continue, I would really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like on this video and of course subscribe to the channel. I am going to be ramping up my uploads as I do want to take this channel to greater heights. iPhone 14 season is among us and I'll definitely be covering the next generation of iPads. So do subscribe to the channel and help support my journey as a content creator. Now the question is, do I regret not going with the bigger M1 iPad Pro for that XDR display? Quite honestly, I did have a chance to use that display in person at the Apple store and let me tell you that display is a thing of beauty. In person, the XDR display is definitely the better panel. That being said though, after having used the 11 inch model for about a year now, I have no regrets. Despite the M1 11 inch not being equipped with an XDR display, it's still packing one hell of a panel. The M1 11 inch is rocking a liquid retina display with a 2388 by 1664 resolution at 264 pixels per inch. It does support Apple's ProMotion technology running at 120 hertz with true tone built in and a fully laminated display. This display is incredible. It is sporting an 83% screen to body ratio. I would have loved to see Apple bump that up to about 88%, making the bezels a little bit thinner. But for the time being, I'm not complaining. This has to be one of the smoothest feeling displays I have ever used. I love how sharp and responsive this panel is. The display is vibrant yet realistic. And surprisingly, it's been terrific with outdoor visibility. I do quite frequently use this iPad to get work done in my car. And even on really bright sunny days, I haven't had much issues with the visibility. For for some reason, I feel so productive when I work in my car. I can't be the only one that feels this way, right? 
However, in the beginning, when I first got my iPad, I did notice there was some screen glare under certain lighting conditions, which can be pretty intrusive and quite annoying. This is where I recommend a paper-like screen protector. This is what I like to call a multi-purpose screen protector with dual functionality. A single purchase comes in a pack of two, so you'll always have a replacement handy and ready to go. The installation process is quite straightforward, and once installed, you will immediately notice a reduction in screen glare and fingerprints. That's mainly thanks to this matte-like finish of the paper-like screen protector. A huge added bonus is if you are a student or an individual who uses the iPad Pro a lot to jot down notes or even sketch on, with this screen protector installed, it legitimately gives you that enhanced feeling like you are writing on real paper. And not to mention, there is a noticeable difference in writing texture with an iPad that uses Paperlike versus an iPad that doesn't use Paperlike. If you want to pick up what I consider to be a must-have accessory for the iPad, there is a link in the description below and thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Instead of using my phone, I do use my iPad as my primary media consumption machine. I watch a lot of Netflix, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, Hulu, you name it, I watch it. I understand a lot of people like to use wireless earbuds when watching content, but for myself personally, I hate sticking things into my ear for a long period of time, probably due to the fact that I do have extremely small ears. So a good speaker setup on a tablet is a must have for me. The M1 iPad Pros do come with a quad stereo speaker setup with two speakers on either side. These are some excellent speakers. They provide me with a fully immersive experience. The speakers do get plenty loud and there is no noticeable distortion even at maximum volume. The combination of both the speakers and this stunning display fully consumes you into whatever media you are watching. It's sort of like having a mini portable theater wherever you go in the palm of your hands. Absolutely love it. Performance wise, this iPad hasn't missed a single beat. It's still as fast and as smooth as the first day I unboxed it. And that's something I can't say about too many tablets out there. Like even with Android tablets, there will be a fall off in performance after about an year or so. So with the processing power of the M1 chipset, you can rest assured that this tablet is overpowered and it will be overpowered for many years to come. And yes, I did say overpowered. You see, the M1 chipset is so powerful that it's sort of an overkill. There is not a single application in the App Store that can even remotely come close to slowing down this powerhouse of a machine. No matter what I'm editing on a 4K timeline, there is no lag, no frame freezes, and no app crashes. That's how well optimized Apple makes their tablets. I do play a ton of Call of Duty on this iPad. I'll be the first to admit that I do sort of have a gaming addiction. I usually just connect a gaming controller and fire away. And the M1 chipset has no issues whatsoever with gaming performance. I can crank up all my settings on my game to the max and to my surprise this iPad doesn't even get remotely hot even after hours of gameplay. It's honestly kind of insane how Apple has been able to handle the thermals given just how thin and lightweight the 11 inch iPad Pro is in person. It's just incredible engineering on Apple's part. I understand a lot of users are disappointed with the upcoming changes to iPad OS 16. If you didn't know iPad OS 16 is set to release this coming September and I did make a dedicated video about all the changes that are coming to the iPad on my channel. I'll link it for you guys in the description below if you are interested. The way that I see it is, Apple will never let the iPad Pro cannibalize their sales of the MacBook Pro. So unless we actually get Pro applications on the iPad Pro, I could care less about software updates. In the current state, iPad OS 15 is completely fine. It's more than good enough for what I use my iPad for. The multitasking experience is pretty good, and iPad OS 15 in general is a well-refined, smooth, and fluid UI, with no real bugs to complain about. However, I will say this, don't expect to buy this iPad with the idea that it is going to replace your actual computer. I mean, it can for a lot of people, but specifically for creatives and professionals, unless pro applications do enter the chat, the iPad will continue to be, well, just an iPad. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. I can transform my iPad into a pretty respectable mini laptop with the help of the Magic Keyboard. I love the portable productivity of being able to carry around an 11 inch tablet with a keyboard cover and getting work done everywhere I go. No matter where that is, I simply hotspot Wi-Fi from my iPhone to my tablet and get to work. It doesn't really matter the location. It can be in my car, it can be in a cafe, it can be on my bed. And that to me specifically is what really defines an iPad. This is a portable workhorse of a tablet with enough computing power to tackle any task. In my early stages of adapting to an 11 inch iPad Pro, I did struggle to type on this smaller magic keyboard. I was making a lot of typos early on while adjusting to the smaller size. But man, did I ever improve over time. Now it's at a point where I need to use this keyboard to type because I swear my words per minute on this keyboard is through the roof. I can write about a 2000 word essay in about half an hour with this keyboard. Once you do adapt to it, there is no going back. You have been warned. Now, battery life after 15 months of usage is still solid. I still have no issues getting through an entire days of usage, no matter how hard I push this tablet. Usually my usage on this iPad consists of multimedia consumption, replying to a lot of business emails, using the Apple Pencil to edit my thumbnails and photos in Lightroom, writing up scripts for the YouTube channel using the Magic Keyboard, and of course playing games like Call of Duty Mobile. 
However, I have noticed that the standby time on my iPad is dwindling. These days, I can lose anywhere between 3-5% to overnight and that is a little bit concerning, especially granted the fact that I was only losing about 1-2% to early on. Another thing to keep in mind is this iPad is slow to charge. It's capable of fast charging at a mere 18 watts, which is incredibly slow by 2022 standards. However, granted the fact that this iPad does have good battery life, you won't be finding yourself charging this device too often, at most around 2 or 3 times per week. Something that does doesn't make sense to me is the placement of the front facing cameras. I don't understand why Apple chose to place it off to the bottom left when you hold your iPad in a landscape orientation. It just makes zoom calls all the more awkward when you do have to look off to the bottom left. It never made sense to me and I don't think it ever will. To conclude this video, as you guys saw for yourself, the M1 11 inch iPad Pro is the ideal option for a lot of users out there. It's truly the best of both worlds if you're in the market for a tablet that's versatile enough to be both a typical handheld tablet and a little mini portable laptop. The M1 iPad iPad Pro really doesn't sacrifice much of anything. I mean sure, the screen isn't an XDR panel with mini OLED, but if this is the only iPad you're staring at every single day, you won't even notice or even care about an XDR panel. If you want to check out some deals on the M1 iPad Pro, there are links in the description below and don't forget to check out today's sponsor Paperlike, it is a definite must have accessory in my opinion. If you made it till the end of the video, I really appreciate you guys watching all the way through, so let me know exactly who you guys are by commenting with the peach emoji down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to flex with your 11 inch tablet tech.